So today we've got the master working on a 1965 Rolls Royce. This came in for a variety of problems, not the least of which somebody installed an aftermarket exhaust system, a very expensive one, using a Subaru, Subaru resonator, Subaru, Subaru resonator, and a MagnaFlow muffler. And the client wondered why it was so loud. There are signs of leaking around the clamps everywhere here, which means the car is running very rich in the black, when you see the black carbon like this. The master's right behind us now. He's building a brand new exhaust system, straight up with a quiet flow exhaust muffler. What he's doing is he's putting it through our booth, the BEM booth pipe bender over here, and custom manufacturing this exhaust system for the Rolls Royce. Actually, what you consider an x frame chassis on these Rolls Royces, and a lot of earlier model vehicles as well, they're super, super strong in terms of their structure, but I will tell you what, extremely freaking heavy frames. These things actually have a setup where, because it is considered an X-frame, the exhaust typically channeled through openings in the frame itself. So you've got to channel all your bends through that. Make sure that you have perfect clearance all the way around them so that there's no rattling or vibrating when the client's trying to drive this beautiful ride down the road. But can you give us an example of another X-frame style vehicle, or particularly uh, an American style X-frame vehicle? Uh, like early model Corvettes, early model Thunderbirds, you know, they had an X-frame style chassis where you actually had to mount the exhaust system through different channels that were super hard to work with. Very good. Job. Thank you so much. Stay up with us. We'll be bringing you updates as the master works through this exhaust system. Underneath the 65 Rolls Royce, you have hand fabricated through the X channel that we just learned about the pipe. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to do right now, please. I see you've got your well done. So, yeah, man. So, now I've already gotten the front pipe, which is everything from the front Y pipe assembly, which is coming off the three or four stainless steel that's coming from each left and right hand bolt the A motor. That Y pipe assembly now is from here all the way through the three bumpers. So, I have the bumper in the count through the X frame. And there's perfect clearance everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead now. You can see I've got a stand in place. I'm going to get the system marked and mocked up and get tack bolted in place. Check on my final fitness through that frame. Make sure we have perfect clearance all the way around that pipe. No vibrations. Pull the board through the X frame itself. And get the same final welding and start building off of that. But I have two questions for you. You said Y pipe. Can you please tell us what is a Y pipe? So on this car, that's actually uh, in, in the fact that it's a V series motor, which means a V6. Well, okay. um, you have two different cylinder banks and you have to bring those two Either sides of the exhaust system together if it's not a true dual system. This system is not a true dual system and there's not enough clearance underneath this Rolls Royce frame for a true dual system. So it is a wide pipe where both sides, left and right, come together as one, so two into one essentially, a two into one pipe, or in other words, a wide pipe. So it does actually have the shape of a Y, and that's what the system is. And about one of the things you said was 304 stainless. What is the difference between the two metals? Is there a difference or not? Yeah, there's, um, you know, there's steel, there's aluminized steel, there is stainless steel, there's 304, there's 409. Each one of those is a different Is it for like a hand uh, uh, cleaner or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it is. Clean your walls with? It is. Yes. Um, there are different types of material, right? So I actually went with the 304, which matches the previously built Y pipe ah, on the okay. walls. So the system is going to match front to rear. And all of that changes not only the life of the product you're building, whether it's one to three years, three to five years, five to nine, and then 10 plus, right? From 409. So all of those are going to change the life term of that pipe and the quality of what we're using, but also change what the welder does in terms of the heat you have to put to it, the wire feed, the wire speed, the wire thickness, everything changes depending on the size pipe and the type of pipe you are welding. Oh, very good, Bob. So thank you very much for explaining that to us. We're going to come back, ladies and gentlemen, and give you an update as Bob continues to move through it. One final question, Bob. What is this we're putting on your head right now? My helmet. And the helmet does what? Protects your eyes from how bright this light is, because let me tell you, it's like looking into the, what's that thing called? The sun. 
I didn't mean the sun. I, do you remember when you took me to the hospital? I was trying to weld. I was trying to weld up the exhaust system. It looked like What's hot point everywhere. It says the sun. Of course. Yeah. And then, and next thing you know, they're telling me. You're, I said, Bob, I can't see. I can't see. And you're like, Did you try wearing a helmet? And you're like, I'm like, I was like, No. Wound up burning red in my eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, be safe like the master. Wear protection on your hands, arms, and eyes. We'll be right back to you. So everyone, we're going to bring you up to date. The master's been at it about two hours now, custom fabricating two. this exhaust for this 1965 Rolls Royce. So far, so good, man. Everything from the Wi-Fi all the way back to most muffler is now completed, welded, sealed, mounted, done. It's absolute perfection. There's clearance everywhere. And now I'm working on what you can do. Your over axle pipe, that is because it's from the outlet of the muffler to the over axle section. I'm working on that first, starting with an 85 out of the muffler. I'm going to go ahead and now, and by the way, I do all this by hand. Uh, this is actually going to be my next mark for my next bin, which is going to be about 75 to turn this thing out towards the rear end of this rolls and get this thing flowing out the back and building that wide pipe for that true dual look. Give this thing a nice chrome tip when it's done. So here we are, everybody. We're at the end of this beautiful 65 custom made dual exhaust by Charles. It's a very challenging one because, like the Chevy of Palace, there's not a lot of room underneath for you to work. The whole system is now been hand fabricated, welded, and using rubber isolators so that there's no hitting on the floor like the client was experiencing before with a Subaru resonator and a Magnaflow buffer. You gotta admit, that was kind of an original one for the first, uh, for this car. Yeah, uh, definitely original. But uh, I'll tell you what, man, this thing came out, I think, great. It looks super, super classic to the fitment of what a Rolls Royce would be. Like, sure. you envision a Rolls Royce, you envision the luxury of it, the size of it, yeah. right? the cleanliness of it. To me, it's all about the lines of this car, it's the symmetry, and that's why we opted to go with a dual exhaust rather than just a single with a hidden exhaust that came down. Yes. We did do a classic style roll lip, two and a quarter inch chrome tip on either side of this dual system, so it does have that symmetry that Rolls Royce would have given this big body car. And Bob, I heard you say the word rolled lip. Can you tell us a little bit, what is a rolled lip? Yeah, sorry. so it's just right here at the face of the tips. It literally just has a rolled edge on it rather than just being a straight cut. It does have a rolled edge going in. It's a smoother line, but it also has that classical style to it. You saw that a lot in the 50s, 60s, 70s on the front of the cars. Absolutely, but one of the things I love is the way you created this rear H-type uh, assembly bug. It'll balance and equalize the exhaust coming out of the line, and it's all well that there are no hangers in this system like existed before. Yeah, it's a, a super nice setup, man. It sounds really, really good. You can lower this thing down and let you guys see the finished view from what everybody will see from the car sitting on the ground at ride height and the Let's give this thing a look up, uh, everybody a look up. Probably not perspective right here. Here's the Rolls Royce all about, but take us through it. We see this world lip now much more visibly uh, as you're talking about it. Take us through it now, Bob. So there it is, man. It's, uh, it's on the ground. This is the final view that you see from the back side and the top side. Super, super clean. I brought the tips on the left and right side, both out front with that Rolls Royce emblem right there in the center of the rear bumper. So it does have that perfect symmetry and flush line. Beautiful job, Bob. Uh, what level tech would you say it would take to pull this off? This is not a C or a B level tech, I don't think, based on what I'm seeing. No, it's uh, definitely a skill installation to do something like that. You know, bending exhaust, as you know, is kind of in lost in art, art. Yeah. Um, especially in today's world. There's not many exhaust shops like there used to be back in the 70s, 80s, even the 90s, 2000s. Mm -hmm. Because now our materials are getting that much stronger. The stainless materials, the 409 stainless we talked about earlier. Yeah. All of those materials are lasting so long that really the need for quick muffler swaps and exhaust system repairs like the and the mighty keys, those things are really starting to kind of close up where they used to be on every corner dominating because there was always somebody either replacing OE parts or doing aftermarket installs. And there were bin cards that went with it, man. There were machines. Bin cards. Right? Tell everybody what those are. I forgot about those. Huh? So there were uh, the bin cards were exhaust bin cards, right? Like I told you, you put in a 1970s Chevelle 454, and it had two dual exhaust, and it had resonators on it, it had mufflers on it. It would literally tell you what size pipe to grab. It would tell you what flanges to create. It would tell you how long to make the pipe cuts. And it would tell you at what angle, like 14 and a half inches from A to B. You're going to bend this thing at 24 degrees. It would literally be a bin card of that exhaust system 
and you can mass produce stock style fit and exhaust. That's like that. I remember that, but you do these all by uh, road of memory of uh, this is certainly not the first one you've done. And also above, when you bend the exhaust like this, you're doing it in reverse order in your mind. It's like yeah. not a uh, one way, what do you call that? A directional rating, correct? Yeah. You're doing it in reverse order. So the, the bend is backwards of the way it sits on the vehicle. That's right. right. Quite a complex thing. Average uh, installation time on something like this, bud? Um, you know, by the time you go start the finish removal of the old, design of the new, fabrication of the new, welding, mocking up, test fitting, you can typically get this thing done, you have about six to eight hours, start to finish, removal of the old, all the way through to the end, with all the proper tooling as well. There's cutoff wheels, there's grinding, there's plasma cutters, there's welders, there are uh, pipe bending machines, there's everything a lot you're going to need, even all the way down to sheet metal shears or brakes just to create your own or design your own exhaust hangers. So Bud, it's a beautiful job uh, you've done here once again. And I'm sure the client will be extremely happy with what you see and it's exciting. Good work, Bud.